Hi there again, uh, Scott here from EdgeMath. Uh, got a question from a student about the difference between a z-test and a t-test, or just the general idea of what we were doing. So, so I found a problem. Uh, if, if we've got a, a refrigerator factory that uh, they know that the overall, the, dip, the width of the door that they need is 1.90 inches. And if it's more than 0 0.01 inches away from that, the door is not going to shut properly. Uh, they, uh, so they want to test if there, there's actually a problem in the system. So they, they think there's a problem in the manufacturing system. And they take a test of 20 doors. They find the mean width is 1.917 inches. If, and they know the standard deviation of that sample. So, And they want to test if there's evidence that the that the overall average door width is actually different than 1.90. So if there's a, if there's, so they want to test if there's actually a problem here. So and because we don't know the, if we knew the um, overall standard deviation, if we knew the how 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 much the overall doors like um, they vary, then we could use a z test. It would just be a normal distribution because we would know it would just fall on a normal bell, bell curve because we would know uh, we would know how the overall population behaves so it would be on a bell curve we'd see if we knew the or a normal distribution if we knew the overall population but we don't know the how the overall population how far it varies all we know is the the group that we have the sample of doors we know how much that population varies, so or, or that sample varies, so so we need to actually scale and scale it down a bit, uh, or, or scale to adjust for that the fact that we're just using the sample to try to get the overall uh, an idea of the overall population. So so and that would look it's going to look somewhere. It's going to be. Uh, the standard deviation is going to be a bit different, but it's going to still be a bell curve. It's supposed to be a bell curve, but standard around 1.90. We've got a t, but we're using the t-score because we don't know uh, the overall, the behavior of the overall population. So now we can carry out a test then. So we know we're using t, and t-value is going to be the sample minus the overall mean over the sample standard deviation for the square root then. Um, you might see this month is S for the sample standard deviation. Um, so that's, in this case, that's 1.917 minus the mean, or the overall mean, is 1.90. And then we divide by the standard deviation over square root of sample size, or square root of 20, and that gives so pop that in the calculator, and that gives getting 7.60. So that's relatively big. Uh, and then we can check the p value using uh, online calculator. We can find the, the probability of that occurring. Uh, we also need d up, and that's or the degrees of freedom from the sample. So that will tell us how much we need to scale it. So we need to, if we have a large sample, that's going to give us a more accurate reading of the overall population. So, uh, so we need to um, scale by the sample size. So that's 20 minus 1 or 19. And then we can use uh, we can use the StatTrek uh, t-distribution calculator. So over at, if you google stattrek.com, S-T-A-T-T-R-E-K, and we want to punch in the degrees of freedom and the t-score. So that was 19 and 7.60. And we can calculate the cumulative probability is 1.000, it's telling us. So that went away a bit. So that gives, so we're up at 
that's telling us the probability less than that. It's basically 1. 1.000. And that means the right tail, say right here, is basically 0. So 0 0.000. And that's less than 0 0.05. So the probability of that recurring hits is very unlikely if the overall mean is 1.90. So we can conclude that there is a defect on that the mean weight is different than 1.90. So great, hope that makes sense. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and good day.